The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In a previous episode, we began working on what we called the Raspberry Pi No HDMI project. That was using a Raspberry Pi to directly drive an LCD screen. And we got that part working, but now we need to work on the input. We saved eight GPIO. What are we gonna do with them? I'm gonna take those eight GPIO and see if I can read them with the GPIO button matrix uh, through the kernel. So you're not talking about like a C program or a Python program that runs in the background. You're talking like low level kernel yeah, stuff. The, the kernel is going to read the button inputs. The uh, four by four switch matrix, mm -hmm. which would give us 16 buttons. Yep. That'd be pretty cool. All right, so while he does that, I'm going to start working on the physical design to make everything go together. And then by the end of the episode, hopefully we'll have a complete portable Raspberry Pi low level system. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired Designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. We still need to figure some stuff out with the device tree overlay. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on the case design. So here is the um, plastic <laughs> board that we made for the switches. I've wired all of that up. Now I'm gonna look at it in relation to the other things in the case. So right now all the sketches are drawn in the same plane, which is a little <laughs> sketchy. Uh, so let's look at this one. I'm gonna look at it from the end here. And I see its height versus everything else. Now we're gonna have you know some other things in here such as a power switch, a charge jack, etc. And then we also have to think the back of this uh, board is going to have screws in the back of it, which will take up some space. So if the battery's in place, like that right there, that's the battery, uh, we don't want those screws to poke into it because if we look at the top view, it definitely is quite a few screws over the battery itself. The safe way to do it would probably be to just go up this way and then have enough space below it for the, for the battery. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and this, take all of this, and I'm going to go extrude it up. Uh, sixteenth of an inch. This engraving plastic is the same thickness as your standard PCB. So that's what that looks like when it's engraved a sixteenth. And we can see that it is well above the battery. Actually, we can check the actual height by seeing how far down the battery is. Uh, let's see, 0.115. Okay, so that should be enough room for, you know, a, uh, a pan head screw. So then we have some space here. See how we've got some empty space. So we could actually maybe have the screen dip down into that. I mean, we have the screen, well, this is what it looks like right here. The problem with that, though, is we might as well have the screen be flush with the buttons, because otherwise the screen is going to be sunken below our control buttons. See how the control buttons are going to have the tack switches, you know, under them? The tack switches are kind of thick. Although what we could possibly do is make the control buttons hollow, so the tack switches hide inside of them, which would save us some space. I mean, at any rate, this thing isn't going to be too awfully thick. Just figuring out what the thickness should be. Of course, if we do it this way, we're gonna have a lot of empty space above the battery. I've got more designing to do. All right, we're in the final throws of assembly. We have the th front half, which was 3D printed with a nice laser cut panel. That looks nice with all the buttons labeled. We have the rear panel, which is super flat. I uh, re-leveled the bed on my maker gear. It feels really smooth. Then we have a big battery, which I think came out of a laptop or something. i put that right there. All right, so I'm gonna start uh, putting these parts into the case. Felix in the background is rewiring the matrix wires to the keypad. So once he's done with that, we'll put the keypad in place. I will mount the screen in the meantime. So uh, yeah, let's, let's have a go. OK, 
Okay, Felix removed our test wiring for the keyboard matrix and he attached a new piece of thin ribbon cable that will be, we will rewire once we know the proper distances. So the reason we did that was because the position of this versus the screen is a little bit different than the uh, test that Felix mocked up, but it was pretty close. So what I'm gonna do in the meantime is I'm gonna place the battery. Now, I removed the plug on the boost converter just to save space, but I'm kind of thinking I still want a plug. I think what I'll do is I'll bring these wires around this way and just put a little disconnect on it, probably just like a, a two pin header, and then solder another header coming from the boost converter to plug into the battery. That way we have a way of disconnecting the battery cleanly without having to desolder it. I mean, desoldering it's okay, but I'd still like a nice clean separation. So I think I'll probably go do that at my workbench and we should have room to put that plug right there. Cool, I've also got the um, hub press fit into place with its uh, data cable. The data cable will, gee, I hope it reaches. Ooh, that's gonna be a bit close. Actually, maybe what we could do uh-huh. Got to figure out, you know, it's like a sandwich. You got to figure out how the sandwich goes together. Yeah, I think that'll work. Also, yeah, we've got the screen now. Oh, see, so it kind of fits in place. We'll probably just glue it in place. So I'll glue the screw in place, making sure that there's, uh, you know, no silver revealed. The original power USB plug will be kind of captured here. Then what we'll do is we'll attach the controls right there. Then we'll rewire them with everything in position. See, it's a little different than what Felix had, but it's pretty close. Let's come around that way and go up. Then we'll put the speakers in here. So yeah, one step at a time, but so far everything's looking so good. I'm going to assemble these controls while Felix is prepping some other stuff. So the D-pad, select and start, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, it's easy as A, B, C, one, two, three, and then here are the control buttons, such as you know, control, escape, delete, F4. Oh, I just thought of something. I hope these screws don't bump into stuff. I may not have taken into account the height of the screw heads when I designed this. That's an easy thing to forget. Like the height of the screw heads or wires are a big thing. You're like, oh, look, I, all the components are in here, but where do the wires go? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I don't know. The buttons are really loosey goosey. I'm not sure if I'm really happy with that. So one of the reasons I didn't put more structure around these buttons is because I wanted to make sure that I was clear of all the uh, diodes on our matrix. But now that's given rise to the problem of the buttons being a little loose. So I had an idea. I mean, the, um, the upper layer here is well away from the diodes. I was thinking I could go into Fusion or whatever and get the pattern of all the outside perimeters of these buttons and then laser cut funky foam to create kind of like a nice soft frame around them so it would keep them in place. All right, I'm gonna go check my files and see what I can find. Let's do an overview of what is inside of this Raspberry Pi, no HDMI. We have a USB hub here, an Adafruit LiPo charger plus boost circuit, big LiPo, our laser paint keyboard matrix, audio amplifier, breakout board for TTL, RGB, and the Raspberry Pi A+. So if I plug this in, it should give us uh, the power. I have the power. All right, I'm gonna fold this over and hope there's enough room with the wires. Come on, you can do it. Squish. All right, looks like everything's fitting together. I'm gonna see if it'll turn on before I screw it together though. Yay, it's booting. For some reason, the screen looks bigger now that I have it in this portable form. It's up and running, sweet. All right, I'm gonna screw it together. Felix, I screwed it all together. Hopefully nothing got pinched. Let's see what happens. Oh, here, you do the honors. Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah. Well, well, you helped yeah. too. You want me to be the one that makes it explode, huh? Yeah, so, you know, that way it blows you up, not me. Okay. Gunsmoke, your favorite TV show? 1849, in a small town called Hicksville. Hicksville? <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Give me my bomb. I want. Oh, I didn't get it. Why did you want to get the bomb? It blew you can me pick them up. up. Uh, can't you pick them up? I don't know. I think you're thinking of like diff a different game. <sighs> yeah. See, you can pick them up. Oh, can you throw them? I don't remember how. Try pushing both buttons, or select maybe. Oh no, that's your. Oh, I forget. This game is awesome. Push select again. Ah. That must be your your weapon screen or something. Yeah. But does it made a gun smoke <laughs> Mega Man crossover? <laughs> ah, I got. I gotta get the power. Ah! There we go. Ouch! This game is so cool. I'll never sell this cartridge. Is that ice water? Mm-hmm. That's okay. Mega Man's a robot. You know, Ouch. electronics work better when they're cold. Is that a penguin? Yeah, it's just like the penguin. <laughs> hey, this thing is really awesome. Yeah, it turned out quite well. I mean, it took a lot of work to make it so low level. And before in the past, we've just taken like a, a spy screen, made a fruit, slapped it onto a pie, slapped it in a teensy and called it a day. But this one is all low level, direct TTL screen connection. Uh, the kernel that drives the keyboard matrix, that's insane. It's all built in. And uh, because there are no extra parts, look how thin it is. This is like smaller than a Nintendo cartridge. It's pretty insane. Small, super small. Very small. Yeah, I like the screen, it look, looks nice and big. I also like how the screen takes up you know, the, the whole screen is taken up for the menu, but then when you go into a game system, it's the proper aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. In fact, all these retro game systems would be four or three. None of them would be widescreen. Until you get up to it, maybe the Dreamcast. Yeah, it's good that it takes that into consideration. Yeah, and then we have our function buttons down here, so you can do Linux things, like jump right out of the menu and go into the shell. That's awesome. Pretty cool stuff. Well, what did you think about this Raspberry Pi, no HDMI project. Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. We're gonna play some video games. Oh yeah. Gunsmoke, right? Yes, Gunsmoke. Yeah, that's Felix's favorite game. But yeah. it's not the best game ever. It is the best game that has ever ever been game. made. Hey, we can use this to play Frozen and Spider-Man games, SEO. Emulation station. It's a whole new portable. No. I do not think you're gonna be hired to write the lyrics to a Disney movie anytime soon. Well, that's fine. Yeah. I can hold Linux in the palm of my hand. Oh wait, I can already do that. We're going to resume work on the super glue gun this week, but first, Karen thought it'd be a good idea to read some of the comments and suggestions from the community. Maybe Karen's right. Maybe I should just kind of start over with this. I know what you're probably thinking. It's like, oh no, you're gonna start over again? Glue gun mark eight. Oh man, it's never ending. Seems like a good way to crush my finger.